Today I'm going to talk about watering and feeding of your bonsai. Because many of you have asked me to do uh, a video about watering and feeding. Watering and feeding are so important to bonsai that I'm wondering why I haven't done this topic before. Most of us take it for granted. But believe you me, watering is so important that there are people who do forget to water and they wonder why their plants die. I remember once when I uh, started the nursery way back in 1986, I sold a lovely red deshojo maple to a customer and this customer brought it back to me after three weeks, completely shriveled up and dead. So before she could say anything, I could see her carrying this shriveled up tree with all dead leaves, almost like crepe paper. And uh, I just asked her, didn't you water this tree? And she turned around and said to me, no one told me that you had to water the tree. So I couldn't believe what I was hearing. So there are people who are a bit naive and simple like that, but I'm sure most of you are not as silly as uh, this dear lady who thought that you didn't have to water the tree and it would continue to live. Well, watering, I would say, is the single most important aspect of bonsai care. I think it is even slightly more important than feeding. But watering, let's start with watering first, is, as I said, the most important aspect of bonsai care. All living beings, whether they are plants or animals, need water in which to survive. If you do not water a tree or you do not drink water or you do not give your pet water, they will die. So watering is absolutely key. And in my experience, I would say of all the dead trees that are brought back to our nursery, 95 to I would say 99% of all the cases of uh, failure of the bonsai is from forgetting to water. I have in front of me here this ficus. It's quite shriveled up and this is an example. Again a customer brought this tree into us this morning and said why is this tree looking so sad? And I said you've not been watering it and the soil is so so dry. So this is one case where people forget to water. Well, what does watering do? You can read up a lot about watering. If you just Google why do plants need water, you'll find enough information. So I'm not going to go into the scientific theory behind watering. Suffice it to say that water provides the uh, medium through which the plants are able to take the water up through the roots and into the leaves and provide that exchange with the air so that the photosynthesis can take place. When the water transpires through the leaves, it exchanges it with carbon dioxide and then the sun plays on the leaves and you get the plant foods being produced by photosynthesis. So that very briefly is what water does. So it is taken up by the roots and then up to the trunk and then into the leaves. So that is the purpose of water. And how much we give, when we give it, and at what time can be a subject of immense literature and discussion. Now, in the temperate climate where I live, we normally water, I'm talking now of bonsai generally, let's talk about the outdoor bonsai. In, in the UK and Western Europe, in the winter from, I would say, the end of October to early March, it is always wet and cold and there's so much rain that the outdoor bonsai can be left outside and the rain and the damp will keep the soil moist. So we don't have to water. When it is very cold, we may put it in the greenhouse and when it's in the greenhouse because it's covered, you may need to water because rain does not fall in the trees under cover or if you put it in a shed for protection, you may still need to water in the winter. If you live in the tropical country where you get the monsoon rains from, say, middle of June to 
end of October, you get torrential rain on certain days, but there are days when you can go through a stretch of about three or four days when you don't get any water at all. So you'll need to water on the days when it doesn't rain. So even in monsoon uh, climates, I find that the rain is not always sufficient because this heat is so intense and causes so much evaporation that you will have to water even if it has rained. You've got to feel the soil and if the leaves are wilting, you will need to water. So at different times of the year, you will have to judge how much water to give. So again, talking from our temperate climate point of view, we water from, I would say, the beginning of March right to end of October when I usually water each of our bonsai twice a day, morning time and evening time. I avoid the midday sun because uh, it's not so much that they burn the leaves, but if you water in the midday sun, the evaporation is so intense that most of the water will be lost by evaporation. On a nursery as large as ours, we spend thousands and thousands of pounds on our water bill because we have seven or eight acres of field to water by hand and then all the bonsai in the greenhouses have to be watered. So the different times of the year and the different times of the day, you've got to remember how to water. I will show you in a minute how you water uh, the outdoor trees with the hose pipe or watering can. And uh, let's talk about the indoor bonsai very briefly. I don't want to take you into our greenhouse, but I may take you later on. But this is a typical bonsai that most of you will have, and you will keep it in the house. And when it's kept in the house, you need to make sure that it gets water uh, virtually, I would say, almost every day during the summer. And in the winter also, if your heating is quite warm, you may need to feel the soil to see whether the soil is damp or dry. Now, this tree hasn't been watered for a couple of days. We kept it dry, especially to do this video. And I can feel that it is dry. The best way to check is to make sure that the soil is always feeling damp. Don't take the risk of letting it dry out. Some people advise you to let it dry so that it becomes powder dry. I don't think that is a good practice. Make sure that the soil is always adequately moist. So uh, with a tree like this, this again is fairly dry. We can have a close look at the soil. But when you're growing trees indoors, again, this is a typical small indoor bonsai, we stand them on little trays so that when you water it, the water that flows through the drainage holes will collect in a little under tray like this. So if you have a small watering can, you can just water the soil like so. This is one way of doing it. There are many different ways of doing it. Or you can take it to your kitchen sink and water it there. Some people even immerse the whole thing in a washing up bowl. That is also acceptable. Make sure that you sink it into the uh, bowl till the water bubbles. And when there are no more bubbles, then I think all the soil has filled up and you can wash the leaves. Some people prefer to just spray it with a little misting spray like this. But don't rely on this completely. I remember a lady uh, bringing a half-dead tree to me, and uh, I asked her, how do you water the tree? So I said, I miss the leaves. So all she was doing is misting the leaves with the little mister, and that she thought was watering, and not watering the roots at all. I think misting is only secondary. It's to keep the thing looking fresh and turgid, but the main watering should be done into the soil there. You don't have to use a sophisticated watering can. You can use a water bottle or you can use a tumbler or glass to water. So there are different ways of watering. And if you have a lot of house plants, you can take it somewhere, maybe to the bath and use a cool or tepid shower and use the shower head to water. it. So as long as the soil gets water, that should be enough. 
So, and depending on the size of the tree, the larger the pot for a larger tree would need water, more water than a smaller pot. But make sure that the soil is always damp. And how frequently to water? Again, there is no hard and fast rule because if your room is warm, it will dry out more quickly, so you may have to water more frequently. I would say that during the summer, most indoor trees would need to be watered about once a day, but the test is really to feel the soil. So there are no hard and fast rules as to whether do you do it once a day or once every two days. You've just got to feel the soil. While I'm talking about watering, the position of the plants is very important. If you keep indoor bonsai, you should always keep it where it gets maximum light. So if you keep it on a windowsill or by a large window, it will get a lot of light and that is ideal for the plants. After all, all living beings, whether they are plants, animals or human beings, uh, and here we are talking about, about plants, need, I would say, three or four essential things. The most essential thing is water, to keep you alive and filled up and turgid. The second thing is food, the plant food, and then it needs air and bright sunlight. So those are the ingredients for healthy growth. You need water, nutrients, which is feed, sunlight, and fresh air. And the plants need air because they take carbon dioxide uh, from the air to produce the food for the leaves. So that basically is how plants grow, and you can see why water plays such an important part in the health of the tree. Um, so we will go out and show you how we water our bonsai collection. Of course, this is a commercial nursery, so I may be watering with a very powerful hose pipe, but even if you didn't do it that way, there are other ways I will be showing you how you can water it. One little trick that you may want to uh, learn is the use of gravel on the under tray. This is just ordinary quartz gravel and it serves two purposes. It makes the under tray look nice, but it also helps to keep uh, the water in the tray longer so it doesn't evaporate so fast so it provides some humidity so if you put some gravel on the tray so that when you've watered the water will stand in that pebble and then it can give some moisture from below but you will have to wash the gravel from time to time because after one or two weeks it starts getting slimy and green so it may not look so nice but at least it serves its purpose so the use of gravel uh, has some function, but I would say it's more decorative than anything else. But if you wish to do it for your indoor plants, it's a nice thing to do. Uh, if you don't, then the water just collects in the tray like so. See how, how useful that tray is. You see it's collected all the water that has come through the pot. And as you know, all plants have to be well drained. You cannot stand a plant in water permanently and hence bonsai pots always have large drainage holes. Even a small pot like this has two holes here. Some people ask me, can you overwater a tree? Now, in theory you cannot overwater a tree because if you use the right compost the water will flow through it, especially the outdoor bonsai, because you're not standing it on a tray. Uh, any excess water will in fact drain through the pot. Sometimes if you live in a very wet climate, like in the monsoons, and if it's rained too much, if you stand the tree on edge, the water will come through like this. So that's another tip I can pass on. So, so much for the use of gravel for the under tray. What do you do when you go on holiday? I said at the start of this video that more than 90% of trees that die, die from forgetting to water. And one of the most 
Uh, dangerous times for any bonsai is when people go away for holidays two or three weeks at a time or even if you go for a long weekend for two or three days and if you don't water and if you have it in a very warm room and in the warm sun it can dry out very quickly so don't forget to make arrangements for watering your bonsai when you go on holiday I know a lot of people they bring back dead trees to me and when I ask them why did they die they say that I left it with my children to water and the children forgot to water the tree and just before they came back they watered it and told me that they watered it but I know that they didn't water it while I was away and hence the tree is dead so when you go on holiday what do you do well there are all sorts of methods that people try one of them is to use a deep bowl like so and they immerse the whole tree like this and fill it up with water and hope that the tree will survive I don't think that's a very good idea because if you flood the roots the roots are not able to breathe so if you leave it flooded for two or three weeks you will kill the tree because the water has not drained through the pot so do not do that I think the best thing to do is to leave your trees with a very reliable person a neighbor or friend who understands watering show them how to water it so that they learn how to water while you're away and uh, this applies to both indoor and outdoor trees I think a lot of people especially who are not into bonsai they just squirt the leaves with water or just squirt the surface of the soil and they think it's watered but where I showed you in the video uh, of the outdoor trees I usually go back to a tree three times to make sure the water has penetrated because sometimes when you water very briefly only the surface gets wet it doesn't penetrate enough and hence the importance of going back to the tree about two or three times to make sure the water has really really filled in another device which I have found on the market is this little wick watering system now this is a plastic container which holds water and it has a hole here and then you have like a felt wick which sucks the water up and if you put the wick on top of the tree it's supposed to transfer the water into the pot it may work but I think you have to keep a very close eye on it and make sure it's really doing the job or even immerse the wick into the root ball bury the wick into the root ball but somehow although we do sell it because customers ask for it I don't think it is the substitute for proper watering doing it manually with a can or with a hose pipe so although these are sold and we do sell it I think I would sell it with a word of caution that do be careful they are not the most efficient form of watering there's no substitute for doing proper watering with a can or a hose pipe so there you go so much for watering and their holiday care when we water our outdoor trees you can do it using a hose pipe or a watering can or so many other devices you can use watering can is useful if you just have a few plants you can water the trees like this just water the soil and water the foliage I know that these are very large bonsai but if you have small trees what we do is you can start by watering the soil and then also water the leaves to wash any dust off the secret of watering is to make sure that the soil gets completely soaked so it's not enough to just do like 10 seconds of the water what I normally do is I water it for about 10 seconds count to 10 like this and then after about one or two minutes go away and water something else and come back and do it another 10 seconds go away and come back again I normally do the trees three times for 10 seconds so if a tree is bigger you may need to do it for longer but the secret is to make sure you really soak the, the root ball otherwise it will not get enough water 
And as for the time of watering, there are many theories about what is the best time to water. But in my view, I think the best time is in the morning, before the sun gets too hot, and in the early evening. So if you are going out to work, it would be ideal to do it before you go out to work, and then do it again in the evening. This applies to summer. I'll talk to you more about different times of the year, what watering regime you need. Um, and that was with the watering can. I'll show you some other tricks that I do when I do watering. So I will show you how I do it with our hose pipe. On our nursery, I use the hose pipe, but I just put the finger on the hose pipe and I get a very fine jet of water like this. I'm not sure if any of you do this, but this is my favorite method of watering. Just using the hose pipe like this to make a fine mist or a spray. So again, I water the tree for about 10 seconds, then go to another tree, and then come back after about one or two minutes, do it again for 10 seconds, go away and do it three times. So this is using the hose pipe, just putting your finger onto it. There are other ways as well. You can also use some of these commercial roses like this. It produces a very fine spray of water and this is also good. But I still prefer my uh, thumb over the hose pipe because I can adjust the jet of the water using that. By using this thumb, I can adjust the jet however far I want. You see, using the end of my finger I can make it go about 20 feet. Of course the water pressure on our nursery is quite high. It's almost like a fireman's fire hydrant. And then if I want to I can just go to about two feet. So the thumb is so versatile in adjusting the distance you can water. This is a very expensive Japanese brass hose that I bought from Japan. You can see how fine the holes are. It really produces a very fine almost uh, mist-like water. Uh, if you have a few trees and small trees, this would be okay, but uh, there are no hard and fast rules. You can either use a watering can or a hose pipe with a rose at the end, but the main thing is to make sure that the trees get plenty of water. So you water the leaves and you water the soil. Watering the leaves helps to wash the dust off each day. It also helps to keep the leaves turgid, uh, but the main thing is to pro provide the uh, pot and the soil with water. And the timing I did tell you, the best time is morning and evening. Uh, there's quite a lot of different thoughts about watering in the midday sun. Many people believe that if you water in the midday sun, the hot sun can cause scorching because the water droplets act as a magnifying glass and can scorch the leaves. That is only a theory that some people have put forward. I personally don't believe that that happens because we water also sometimes in the midday sun and uh, it doesn't tend to scorch the leaves. Most of the scorching of leaves occurs when you forget to water and the leaves have become so dry that the ends get burnt. Um, so with the large nursery like this, we start watering in the morning and water continuously from 9 to 6 on a hot summer's day. So although I said that you can water uh, throughout the day, the main thing is to make sure that the trees get watered. And I know that it's not ideal to do it right in the middle of the day, but as you can see, we have a huge nursery with about 20 or more thousand plants. So we have to be watering throughout the day so that we manage to get all the trees covered. We now move on to feeding the trees. Now, feeding the trees is about providing nutrients for the plants. And all plants need food, like human beings need food and nutrients. Plants also need food. If we look at any fertilizer packet, you will see, we will show you some of our commercial fertilizers. They all have uh, a label which says what the composition of the feed is. And usually there are the three uh, uh, letters NPK. N stands for nitrogen, 
P stands for phosphorus and K stands for the potassium. So the NPK is about the constituents of the plant food. So these are commercial fertilizers that we use. There are all sorts of proprietary brands. I won't mention the names because I don't want to do advertising for different firms. The Japanese produce their own bonsai fertilizer and uh, they're very good. And you can use virtually any fertilizer. So I'm not fussy about that. Now, a few words about feeding. The fertilizer you can get either in liquid form, which is sold in a bottle, concentrated, so you have to dilute this, or you can use solid fertilizer. If you use the solid granular fertilizer, for an indoor plant as small as this, you can just put a few grains, maybe about 20 little grains like this, and that will be enough to last you at least two months. But we prefer not to use the solid fertilizer for indoor trees because it always is messy. And when it gets wet, mold starts forming on it, so it looks unsightly. But I personally believe that the solid fertilizer is better value and it has more nutrients. When you buy the liquid feed, most of the liquid feed you're buying is water and it has to be diluted, I know, but it's still in water form. So you're paying a lot of the water and the nutrients is minimal. But when you use this, you still have to dilute it. So the dilution, this cap here has a little measuring uh, device and you measure like one capful to about 300 milliliters or so. So they usually give instructions as to what to do. So this has to be diluted. And uh, so you can use both the solid feed or the liquid feed for indoor plants. But the outdoor trees, I do not recommend the liquid feed because it's very wasteful. It's a very expensive way of feeding. It's much better to use the solid fertilizer. So we will show you how we will feed the outdoor trees. Your bonsai only need to be fed during the growing season. So in the winter time, you don't feed because the plant is not growing. Here at our nursery, we are in the temperate uh, zone. So we feed our trees from, I would say, early May or the end of April even, and right up to, I would say, early September. In the winter time, we do not feed our trees. So we do not feed the trees because they are not growing. So you only feed it when it's growing. So the nutrients is to supply the tree with nutrients to feed the, the entire structure that the leaves produces the carbohydrates through photosynthesis and it goes into the branches and the trunk. So, so much for feeding and the time of the year. So it's done during the growing season. The conifers, because they are evergreen, you can feed them a bit earlier. You can start feeding from, say, very early spring in March and continue maybe right up to early October. And that will keep it nice and green. So you can use any fertilizer. This is a Japanese fertilizer, but any plant food is fine. In the early spring, we use a high nitrogen fertilizer. So anything with 10, percent nitrogen is nice, 1077, something like that is good in the spring, or even chicken manure is very good in the early spring. And in the autumn, you can reduce it to a low nitrogen, but a high potash, high P and K fertilizer. There are some people I've read in some literature that they use zero nitrogen in the autumn. I do not recommend that. I have said so in some of my books. If you use a zero nitrogen fertilizer, and if you use it too much, or if you use tomato fertilizer, tomato fertilizer is to ripen tomatoes. It is not for ripening bonsai. If you use a zero nitrogen, it will make the tree go yellow. So it will cause chlorosis. So use a low nitrogen, but high potash in the autumn. So remember, high nitrogen in the spring, maybe up to 10 or 12 nitrogen, maybe 12, 5, 7, 
and then in the autumn use a low nitrogen, maybe something like 3, 10, 15 or something like that. So as long as the PNK is high, nitrogen is low, that is good for the autumn. And that produces very good colour in the maples especially, but uh, it also strengthens the evergreens. So how much fertiliser to use? Now this is again some of the solid pellets. And I like to use the small pellets like this. So the small pellets are easier to go into the soil. Because I have experience, I just sprinkle enough to go round the pot. If you want to be more scientific, you can either measure it in terms of a teaspoon or a tablespoon. Usually for larger trees like this, this pot must be every bit 45 to 50 centimeter long. So for large trees like this, in the spring, I put about, I would say, two tablespoons in the early spring. And then I wait for about three months. So if this is the end of April, I don't feel again till about end of June. And then maybe early July, I will give it another feed. And that may be enough. Sometimes if I want to, I may give a very high P and K feed. I would say around about early August. So two tablespoons usually lasts uh, about two months. A small tree like this, which is only about, I would say, that is not even 30, maybe 20, 25 centimeter. One teaspoon like that, every two months is sufficient. There is a type of Japanese fertilizer you find, I think they call it rapeseed cake, which is like little um, sweets, you know, they're about one inch diameter balls and people put it on and releases the fertilizer slowly. You can use that but as long as you feed the tree that's all that you need to do and uh, the frequency is important but you don't need to feed too much. What happens if you feed the tree too much? I will just mention something which is highly scientific and that is called reverse osmosis. If you look up the internet uh, about reverse osmosis, you learn more about it. Reverse osmosis happens when you put too much fertilizer on a plant. In the pot of about this size, if you put like I would say six or ten tablespoons of fertilizer, the fertilizer will be so strong that the plant will not be able to take up moisture. The whole system will be filled with the fertilizer that it has to throw out the fertilizer and it will not be able to take water in and that is what reverse osmosis is. So read up about it on the internet. So be warned, too much of a good thing can be bad for the tree.